We've just been joined by Elizabeth James, who is the Director of Digital Commerce at Nestle. It looks like we have you up on screen now. Hi, Elizabeth, how are you doing? Hi, hi, Sarah, good afternoon. And thanks for having me here today. Can you see my screen as well? Yes, we can see you clearly and we can see your screen. Really glad to, to have you joining us today. So just to set the scene for everyone, uh, Lisbeth is currently the Director of Digital Commerce at Nestle. She started her career with Saatchi and Saatchi in 2006 as a brand strategy planner and held various roles in marketing and advertising across Asia, Middle East and North America, in IT, education, hospitality, and most recently in CPG. In her last previous role at Coca-Cola, she led the digital transformation for Canada, launching a robust product content ecosystem. And at her current role with Nestle, she leads a vibrant e-commerce digital commerce team and sets to reach a new digital excellence benchmark. So bringing a lot of international and diverse backgrounds with you. So thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to hearing from you about how to establish effective channel strategy to navigate e-commerce. Over to you, Elizabeth. Thanks, Sarah. That was such a lovely introduction. Thank you so much. And uh, I mean, I I'm enjoying the session so far. I, I hope all of you are also. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, I mean, I really like being part of most of these events and industry events, especially because it kind of gives you a different perspective, like it gives you an opportunity to learn from each other. Um, and, and again, like the fact that, uh, you know, like the industry is growing so fast and the marketplace is changing rapidly. So the, the only way we can actually kind of help each other and kind of grow together is these events. So I really like that. Today, my session is pretty much exactly that, like uh, the various pilot projects we have completed, the learnings we had uh, in the Canadian market space, uh, basically all the digital grocery specific, Canadian specific learnings related to channel, uh, you know, channel strategy, as well as, uh, you know, the SKU transformation. Uh, so I put together a framework, which will probably be a really nice, um, what do I say, like a, a, a a learning starting point for you to explore and kind of explore uh, further and uh, use for your business, like customize it for your business. So as you know that the market is evolving um, uh, really differently, it was already evolving and with pandemic it accelerated in a way that we could even like, uh, I don't know, like what do, what do you say, right? Like how fast the market is changing? Let's just look at six years ago, um, where we are at. So 2013, 2014, Canadian landscape was pretty much quite simple, straightforward. Obviously, I didn't put all, our, all the players here, but in terms of formats, it's traditional format and then convenience and drugstores. And, and that's about it. This, we are not talking too far away. We are really talking uh, five to six years ago, this was the marketplace, right? Now, let's just look at what is happening now. So this is the transition. This is the this is the this is the new world, and this is the new reality. And everyone knows, and everyone kind of uh, really trying to get to speed. Whether it is retailers, whether it is uh, the the new opportunists, like say for example, most of the intermediaries, the integrators. Uh, so this is such an amazing environment. How the market is actually changing, and how it is exploding, I would say, and the new formats. Ultimately, everyone is actually looking towards a happy consumer, and that's about it. Convenience to the consumer is the end of end game on all these channel evolution. Now, I'm sure all of you are familiar with omnichannel, pure plays, intermediaries, specialties, uh, direct to commerce. I don't necessarily have to go through the definition of what this is, but but I, I do like to touch upon something um, about each of these channels in terms of how it is transforming and what is the logical approach to support the opportunities and staying relevant. So let's, let's start with omni-channel. So most of the traditional channels are the ones who are actually going into the space, this format. 
Uh, one of the main areas they are actually focusing on is diversified delivery pickup options and stores modified as experience zones, dark stores, micro fulfillment centers. We heard from Walmart team this morning, like how, uh, how the uh, how the stores are transforming. So Walmart recently announced the hybrid locations, super centers changing into what micro fulfillment centers, driving increased basket size using uh, main to maintain profitability, having a mix of ambient and fresh. Um, again, uh, like earlier, it was only Amazon who was demanding uh, profitable SKUs, and they even came up with a name crap, which is can't realize any profit. Um, you know, SKUs like that. But today, Walmart and other formats, even uh, intermediaries like Instacart, is actually demanding manufacturers to relook at the profit the SKU innovation, uh, serving for a true omni-channel experience to the consumer. This is very critical for most of the omni-channel retailers. Why? Because um, there is a there's a the general understanding of omni-channel as being present through multiple touch points, but there is more to it in a way. It should be a sequential experience. There should be a connection from point one to point Z. Uh, so it's it's for instance, if you bought a mattress. Uh, if you add a mattress to an add to cart, like you, you added the mattress to the shopping cart, the next communication you're seeing, whether it is in Facebook or Instagram, it should be something about how to purchase that product or providing an offer that next level. And then from there, the consumer is seeing your brand in a third point, then it has to be something about post-purchase. Like, what do you do to uh, after that, like probably a mattress cover. So the omni-channel experience or omni-channel communication has to be aligned. So the marketing as well as your experience with the uh, channel has to be aligned. And this is becoming extremely critical for this uh, format or this group. Uh, so some of the pictures here, just to highlight like how the market is changing and what are those new delivery patterns and the, um, you know, the micro fulfillment center references. And pure plays at the end of the day, it's technology drives end-to-end -end user experience. And Amazon led this uh, space in terms of format. Uh, there are some interesting facts also coming in here, making manufacturers life more difficult. For example, you need to have a tote friendly packaging. So which means like, you know, in an auto micro fulfillment environment, pretty much robot does everything. And you need to make sure your skew dimensions matches with that, your weight your virtual bundles should be right. There should be a minimum order limit to maintain profitability, environment friendly, reusable bins. And again, like Amazon always, um, you know, come up with strategies and uh, ways to make consumers life easy and good. But this time with packaging, they are helping the manufacturer as well. They are providing certificate and encouraging manufacturers to go towards frustration-free packing, ship in your own container, prep-free packaging. So this is, this is pretty much going to dictate the future in a way or the other when it comes to packaging. So if you see, there's a reference I have added here. I'm not sure you can see my cursor, but like, so the packaging is becoming way simplified than how it used to be. And another interesting fact to pure plays is they are getting into the experience zones as well. So they're, store, they're launching stores to have that experience to the consumer and kind of associate with the brand. Then uh, moving on to group three and four, I kind of put this together, your intermediaries and aggregators. This is an interesting channel and a very uh, exciting part of the story. Here, uh, it's more like, what do I say? Um, you know, in luxury brands we used to have in the past, personal shopper, now with Instacart and Ayanabagi and Corner Shop, you know, you're getting an opportunity to like really shop from multiple grocery stores in and around your area. So you don't necessarily have to change your local grocer, but at the same time have the convenience and delivery uh, so it's it's a very new world, a very new format. And again, like touchless delivery, new ways to deliver your product, um, fresh and fast hot food. And some of the food service uh, apps are also converting into your part grocer. So again, like immediate grocery, anything important, you could easily order through them. Uh, so yeah, so this is another space. It's evolving and it's a new format. And again, your digital shelf here is different. It is It, it could be a menu optimization or it could be a regular digital shelf. It's all interconnected, but it's slightly different from the other format so that as a manufacturer, you have to look at this channel very differently. 
And from there, the final group, I mean, this group alone can be like a really big topic and lots of uh, areas to touch upon, but I try to make it as simple as possible and very specific to Canada. It's specialty, it's direct to commerce, it's uh, marketplaces like um, third party, um, Amazon 3P or Walmart and social commerce channels. So it's pretty much anything where you could go very high level of customization. And as you see, um, Canada as a market, it's very um, diverse. Uh, Toronto alone speaks over 180 languages. So with pandemic in uh, traditional uh, cooking, the traditional retail, like online retail spaces, again, further um, went down to ethnic grocery, ethnic grocery online sites, uh, farm to table concept, interest in increased um, interest in local produce, direct connection with the brand. And there are like SKUs uh, which are getting developed, which is very, very highly customized for a very specific target group. And of course, social commerce. So you, you could easily see how much, uh, you know, as a marketer or as a manufacturer, how do you really tackle a market this diverse? And, and unfortunately, like, just think about a few years ago, it wasn't anything like this. And still the transition is, um, especially for big grocery companies, when you really look at it, still the transition is slow, but with pandemic, it accelerated. Um, so how do you develop channel strategy for something which is so diverse, right? What, what, what is a channel is looking, um, channel or retailer is actually expecting from you? A value packed customized portfolio. A consumer is expecting a delightful omni-channel experience. How do you deliver this? Is it even uh, something we can actually provide? It's in its like absolute confidence right now because we did talk about how the market changed but how much as a manufacturer or brand, how much we changed internally, right? Like, let's just um, take back and think about how our business is structured. Uh, is it something like, you know, did we really relook really at how we structured and how we are actually providing services to match with a channel, a marketplace like this, so that we can develop that channel strategy? So I wanted to touch upon the fact that. Um, how a digital commerce or a current approach of digital commerce from what I have learned so far and from uh, talking to people who are working in the same field and same industry um, in Canada, mostly digital commerce or digital business team sits either with the marketing or with commercial team for obvious reasons, because anything you talk about e-commerce, it all starts with the fundamental thing is obviously digital shelf and hence omni-channel experience. So it, it makes sense to, um, you know, like focus and focus entirely on um, the, the, the marketing side of things. So hence digital shelf and omni experience. And the customer team, sometimes they are, yes, of course, very focused. And sometimes if, if the retailer is, uh, you know, giving priority to a, a new channel, like for example, Walmart is ex highly focused and they're giving a lot more importance to this channel. Most of the retailers are. So the customer teams will be slightly involved. Again, new road to market marketplaces, it's always a pilot study or an initiator of the e-commerce team and mostly it's standalone. Now the market is exploding in a pace. In five years, this is what happened. And with the pandemic, it will accelerate. You, we can look at other markets like say Asia or you, uh, um, North America, um, North America, not so much, uh, US not so much, but Asia and Europe you can actually see the evolution is way more like people mostly not even using desktop anymore. It's always driven through apps. So the space is very fast. So in about five to 10 years, that can happen. So how are we preparing ourselves for this uh, new world and how, how as a brand or a manufacturer, we are preparing for this new world. Some CPG companies already taking really important uh, role in this. They're digitizing their business. And in a way, uh, it is it is important, like really, like this is the time to go back to the drawing board and relook at how the business is structured in a, in a way that it will actually help us to create a strategy which is not a conflict to the new marketplace. So what I've done is I kind of put together um, a series of pillars or functions which kind of contribute to this conversation. Uh, but before I get into the details of that, I wanted to address, address one point 
the most common um, understanding or uh, acceptance about digital commerce is digital commerce is not a new channel. Uh, I mean, the thing is like it, it's perceived or understood as a, as a channel. It's just another channel along with a series of channels or route to market we currently have, which is actually not true. Digital commerce is a way to transform or digitize your business because any anything you're doing, it kind of having that impact uh, and you have to transition it to make sure that you know you are a successful brand or manufacturer in this new marketplace. So let's start with your master business strategy. So we cannot have a Walmart uh, specific market uh, master strategy and then uh, walmart.ca will be just part of your e-commerce strategy. So we need to start thinking either as a channel at the channel level, that will be a little more complicated, but at, at least at the group level. So an omni-channel strategy as the master strategy. So it is important to like start thinking differently. And many organizations already using pandemic um, as a leverage or probably like um, a way to restructure the organization, consolidate positions and uh, add uh, new resources where relevant. So organization structure, like it's time for us to relook at the organization structure and technology infrastructure. So this is, I mean, I know that from uh, we are hearing different conversations and different topics about technology. There's way too many platforms are coming into the market. Uh, every day there's a new tool in the market, um, but this is critical. Technology infrastructure is extremely important because it will speed up your go to market, uh, and it, which is important. Why? Because if you are not present, like many of you have seen already during pandemic when most of the big brands couldn't really make sure that you know our products are there on time. Most of the products went out of stock, but we have seen a lot of new brands coming up there, digitally native brands. How did they manage to do it that quickly? That's because their thinking was more entrepreneurial and they worked like a startup. They didn't have hierarchy. They didn't have um, decision-making delays. So they went pretty quickly and they launched brands. So all these digital native brands can actually start occupying this new spaces. Now, it's definitely not a big deal for bigger companies because it's a really small brand, right? But think about 10 such brands over time could be your challenger brand. So you're actually losing your market share there. So hence, technology is one way you could rapidly be part of the new world, new marketplace. And having that technology built across your system is equally important as well. So when I say technology, it could be a content ecosystem. It could be your supply chain. So let's just go to supply chain and look at it. So it's important for us to make sure we have the right last mile technology. Last mile technology itself is a new topic and a very important topic, especially in fresh and uh, produce world, uh, but I could just give a quick definition what exactly it means. It's a series of platforms and technology uh, kind of combined together to provide a frictionless frictionless experience, a uh, delivery experience to the consumer. So, so those technology, bringing in those technology in your business and making sure your supply chain is equipped with that is extremely important. It's just not for the retailer. As a manufacturer, it's time that we should start thinking differently. And then again, demand planning. So channel-wise planning, adapt to market needs. Um, we, it, it's very tough for big brands to go beyond high volume products and thinking about, um, you know, like exclusives or variants or mix uh, skews, but it's 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 very important to adapt to the new market to start our thinking to pick back delivery formats uh, to stay in business and probably to stay relevant. So some other areas being finance, again, relook really, really at pricing, the profitability part, invest for the future, optimize tax landscape. It might look like you're spending a bigger sum as you know your tech investment, but it kind of helps you make sure that you optimize your resources and have more returns in the future. So it's, it's important to invest right. As I, as I mentioned, product development is very important. Uh, consumer behavior is changing. Just look at ourselves, like what we bought six months ago versus now is totally different. Like the formats we pick up is different. The products we are buying is different. So we need to start looking at product development based on the current requirement and the current format. Um, 
convenience is the key. And again, packaging is extremely important, like sustainable options, lower the cost, practical packaging, um, and people, HR, uh, this is again an important aspect, right? Like without which nothing will happen. So um, one a suggestion I have is like, when you have your e-commerce team internally, try to pick a team which really acts like an entrepreneurial team. They, they are very, uh, you know, like, because usually when you're in a bigger organization, you tend to uh, go back and forth with issues with different departments and you may not get the approvals and, you know, it kind of gets delayed for months and weeks. You will, um, you, you will be, you'll not be able to really take a decision. So if you have team members who can start thinking more entrepreneurially, that's the way to go. And you need to pick teams which can act and do things faster so that, that you're not really missing the, uh, the market changes. And again, like HR has to, I mean, and most of the companies are actually looking into it, like have a division to improve the knowledge. And, and when I say knowledge, most of the times it's just basic uh, search marketing or digital marketing, not just that, like for each of these divisions, how the transformation is happening and that kind of, that kind of advanced uh, training is required to keep the existing workforce adapted to this new market. And finally, marketing. Marketing is in a way or the other ahead of the space, but as I mentioned, the omni-channel uh, marketing is the way to go and how to do that is by combining your brand, brand uh, investments, your retail digital media investments, your social investments. It has to really, the, the, the media planning should be in such a way that you're actually supporting your omni experience of your consumer. So that integration is again critical. So based on what I have just shared and explained and what my learning so far, I put together a framework. Uh, this is something you could probably use as a guideline or um, you know, a framework to just discuss internally with the group. Um, it worked in many ways. At the same time, it requires a lot of fine tuning and customization for your business, depends on your priorities. So this is how I looked at it. Like there is a step one A and B. Why? Because it has to go parallel. You can't disrupt everything which is happening now. Uh, even though things are probably not profitable, but you have to continue to make sure that the business is moving and ongoing. So yes, the current capabilities, current uh, updates on product pages and all that, it has to continue to happen. At the same time, think and implement, uh, a, build a team, your A team, to build the business strategy to align with each channel group. Like create a different team. They have to really think about it as like another startup and internally work on a new set of SKU portfolio. So if you have 500 to 600 SKUs, uh, probably about 100 SKU would be a really good pilot for you to start on. Depends on how much you can actually invest into it. But this is something which will actually help you do that transformation. And these SKUs can eventually become the main uh, stream SKUs. So understand the marketplace requirement Profitability is absolutely important. That's the only way sustainability you will be able to um, bring in business. So again, uh, fresh is the biggest category where this is a problem, but there are other marketplaces where other countries where people found solutions. So maybe this is the time to find that out and have the right dimensions, make sure the variety and convenience is there in the product you're developing or the product you're putting together, or it could be even a virtual pack. Um, and then have the IT and supply chain infrastructure implementation in a phased way. Uh, strive for a minimum viable product rather than making sure everything is perfect, which is very difficult. So work towards a minimum viable product and go phased implementation and invest in a really good price monitoring tool because the minute you go online, the pricing is becoming a big issue. So it's important for you to make sure that you have the right price monitoring tools and manage the pricing in the marketplace to avoid conflict. Um, and then finally, design the consumer journey aligning with the individual channel strategy to ensure that omni-channel experience. Uh, and I would say this is definitely just a framework. So from point one B to five is something you can actually like, like do an experiment, do a pilot for a smaller category, see how it works, and then um, if it fine tune it and keep moving. And finally, you get to a point where 
you have an overall business transformation for your business. So not just the marketplace is changing, it's time that brand and manufacturer also start relook or start looking at how we are organized and how we as a company. Most of the players are still um, probably supporting the 2013, 2014 Canadian marketplace. And by the time we make that change, uh, market the current marketplace will further develop and further it will actually evolve further. So with that, um, as I mentioned, future is ever evolving, and uh, obviously we will we will be able to see more augmented reality. Like today, we are talking about product descriptions and features and benefits and regular uh, product images, but it it will be uh, pretty soon. We'll be start talking about augmented content and. Uh, voice content and things will be like evolving every day. Um, having said that, uh, whether the evolution eventually uh, takes us to an absolute virtual world or not, there's definitely an immediate future which will last for at least 10 to 12 years for Canada because just like how we saw the Walmart video this morning, uh, the tech and food, there is a fine union between tech and food and this kind of helps us to uh, have that interesting um, what do I say, like um, an omni experience in the meantime till if there is a complete transition to one side or the other, but this will definitely be there for some time till the market saturates itself to a point that, you know, this is the new new world or new change in the market. So I did find this very interesting video by a company called Habitat. Uh, they are a pure play business in um, Singapore. They launched their experience store for the first time a couple of one year ago. And it's very interesting to see it's a micro fulfillment center. It's a regular store. It's a food service, um, uh, you know, store as well as a complete experience zone. Like it's beautiful and it's, it's very interesting. So I thought I'll share that. It's a little long video, but I hope you'll enjoy it. And with that, I'm closing my presentation. If time permits, I'll take questions. And uh, if otherwise, I'm totally open for any kind of um, like, you know, questions or interactions. So please do write to me and looking forward for some great uh, discussions. So enjoy the video. Want to know what the future of tech and food looks like? I'm at Habitat by Honest Bee the world's first tech-enabled grocery and food wonderland in Singapore. Habitat by Honest Bee pioneered the new-gen retail concept, which is Honest Bee's take on how retail should be. The new-gen retail concept leverages technology to provide more convenience with even more human interaction at the space. This magical space has no queues at checkout and it's cashless. Powered by Honest Bee technology, all you need is in the Honest Bee app. Enter, exit, menus, groceries, and the in-app wallet, BPay. To enter, simply scan your Bee Pass. This works as your identity within Habitat by Honest Bee. Here's where it all begins. When visitors enter Habitat by Honest Bee, they are greeted by the friendly Habitat by Honest Bee concierge team who are there to enhance your shopping experience. Grocery shopping is actually enjoyable here. Let's grab a trolley and get started. From an online business providing on-demand grocery and food delivery services, Habitat by Honest Bee is Honest Bee's first foray into the offline retail space. Spanning 60,000 square feet, Habitat by Honest Bee houses over 20,000 groceries and essentials, as well as more than 15 original F&B concepts. There's tons of great things you can enjoy at the store. There are a few ways to purchase groceries here. If you have 10 items or less, you can use the scan, pay, and go function. All you have to do is pick up the product, scan the barcode using the app, and you're good to go. Or if you would like to shop for more products, simply load your items onto the shopping trolley and use the auto checkout and robo collect service. There's plenty more groceries and daily essentials in Habitat by Honest Bee, which you can browse through using the digital kiosks located throughout the store. Scan your Bee Pass after you've selected your items and collect them at the collection point. Data is used to understand shoppers' habits and make highly personalized recommendations for similar products they may like. The crowd's not just here for the tech. This exploratory space is inspiring and multi-sensorial. 
and not once does it lose its human touch. Each nook and cranny is designed for you to get the most out of your day. Whether you're here to shop, catch up with friends, read, or host date night, you can touch, feel, smell, listen, and taste some great grub like steaks and grain bowls. With over 15 F&B concepts, you're spoiled for choice. From local delights to Japanese souffle pancakes or craft beers, all menus can be found on the app. Or pick fresh seafood and have it cooked the way you like it. Just look at these live Boston lobsters, which you can immediately buy and have it grilled on the spot. The checkout area makes things a lot simpler. No queues, no cards, no cash. All you have to do is push your trolley in and scan your VPAT. The basket will go through a scanner that will scan each item while your groceries are packed. A notification in the app will tell you when they're ready. In the meantime, grab a Hokkaido soft serve or do a quick coffee run and relax before you leave. When your groceries are ready for collection, you'll receive a notification in the app. Head on over to the collection point, scan your B-Pass, and let the robots do all the work. You're good to go. And there you have it. Had my lunch, picked up my groceries for the week, and I was left with a full belly. I'm excited to come back to Habitat by Honest Feet, where tech meets food for an inspiring, wholesome experience like nothing else. Thank you so much. That was really a lot of great detail there about how everything comes together and really the key is to look at everything from an omni-channel perspective, as you said, right? Um, and yeah, also really interesting to see uh, what, what companies like Habitat are, are doing. It's um, really futuristic, so really exciting to, to see all of the tech and all of the new innovation. Uh, we, we are now actually running into our coffee break, but would just love to ask one quick question um, for those of you that, that are still happy to stay for an extra minute. Um, you talked a little bit about, um, well, you talked mostly about digital kind of having an impact on the entire business. So um, curious to get your insights. How do you think uh, different teams, different departments within CG's can really kind of collaborate how, how do you work across different teams within different departments to really make sure that um digital is being integrated do you have like an, an annual get together do you have any forums how, how do you go about the kind of collaboration internally so most of the most of the businesses are actually kind of prepared you know having like a steering committee or a, a division especially for you know um like your exclusive digital commerce team kind of lead that conversations with different departments. But honestly, like that's not really enough. Like you still need leadership alignment and you need to have that individual division leadership getting involved in a more detailed way is the only way actually that transformation will come to life. Because at least for the last four to five years, the steering committees, the pilot teams, we're all working and trying to do that, building the business together, but that's not really um, happening. So the ideal way I would say is because understanding the market is changing, the leadership has to come together and have that transformation individually in each department and then connect it together. That, that's the only way I guess that change will come in. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And hopefully now with the shift uh, as a result of this pandemic, it will be much more so at the forefront of the leadership's attention than ever before. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank Great. You. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Uh, we are now currently into the coffee break. So thanks again. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of the summit and take care. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, thanks again, Sarah. So all the best for the rest of the event and uh, everyone please enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.